Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you a method to create a fake audio visualizer. Now, I wouldn't recommend you do this in Premiere. If you can, I would do this in After Effects, but I get this requested a lot, and I thought maybe this will help show some tricks and ideas, even though it's probably not recommended to do heavy motion graphics like this in Premiere. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to File, New Sequence, and I suppose you can make this any size you want. I'm just going to use a 1920 by 1080 sequence. So once you have our sequence, I'm going to head over to the toolbar and I'm going to find the rectangle tool. And here I'm just going to go to my program window and click and draw out a thin rectangle stripe of about the height that you want your visualizer to be. Now you'll see this created a graphic layer. And what we want to do is create a simple animation on this bar to make it go up and down. So I'm going to do that by heading over to the effects panel and finding the crop effect. And then using the crop effect, I'm going to add a keyframe on the top parameter. So I'll click the stopwatch icon and I want to increase the top amount so that you can see the bar start to go down. Now this would be zero and this would be hundred percent. So we're really starting at like 30 something percent. I'm just going till I see that first bit of cropping start to happen. And then I'm going to move forward a little bit, crop down. Um, I don't want to crop all the way down because the visualizer never is going to go fully down, maybe just halfway down like so, and then back up. So we'll go back up to our original amount. So I've got this little animation going on here. And if I press play, I can see what that looks like. It's a little slow in my opinion. So I'm just going to adjust these keyframes around to bring them up to the type of speed that I want, like so. And I'm just going to trim the end of the clip to finish at this last keyframe. So why don't we just do a two second little animation there for even's sake. And now we have our bar animation basically ready. Now, all we're gonna do is just use the power of repetition and duplication to duplicate this over a, a couple times and offset it and create this fake audio spectrum. So it's not actually gonna be reacting to music, it's just gonna to appear to be if we put it at the right speed. So I'm gonna hold Option on my keyboard, click and drag this out to duplicate it. And then on this duplicated layer, I'm simply going to move the position over slightly. Now I'm gonna do this, let's just do it four times, or let's just have four copies. So I'm just visually making sure they're balanced, same amount of space in between each one. You can use the up and down arrow keys to get that exact, but I can just eyeball it and see that they're balanced. Now, once I have the four duplications, what I'm going to do is go to my toolbar once again and find the rate stretch tool, or you can press R on your keyboard to grab that. And if I click and drag out a little bit, we can create some different variations in time on these four different bars. So if I change the speed of all of them, we'll see they'll go down and bounce up in different amounts. I'm just going to do Command C to copy and paste it, and then making sure my track is highlighted, I'm going to just Command. I'm just going to Command V a couple times, and I'll do the same thing for the other tracks. So I'll just make sure those are highlighted. Go press up arrow to to reach the end of that cut, and then do that, and I'll do that. So we have a four by four kind of going on here four duplications, four copies. And you're already seeing why After Effects is probably more suited for this type of thing. It just is too tedious. In, in Premiere, it's not meant to be a motion graphic program. But what I'm gonna do now is just at the very last one, I'm going to use the rate stretch tool to kind of bring everything back to speed. I'm gonna just make everything kind of match up. We're just getting different variations of speed, but now I've got this even block of animation like so of this this bar going up and down and we're seeing differences in variation of the animation now all i'm going to do is highlight all of this right click and nest it into a nested sequence kind of grouping it all together and now i simply have to duplicate this over however many times i want so and we will kind of get an illusion of a visualizer going on so in order to make it look not so repeated, we can do the same thing we did earlier just by rate stretching things a little differently. So I could make this one a little bit shorter like so and just copy and paste them as many times as I want. If I want to add some color onto it, I can go to the gradient generating tools. So the four color gradient 
and generate that on there. You can pick whatever colors you want. You can even animate the colors or change things around. And I've successfully created this little 10 second loop, which if you do put it to music, it will somewhat look like a fake visualizer. And you can basically just adjust the speed of this nested sequence. Um, if you have a faster song, you could do like a faster animation speed like this. Or if you had a slower song, you could do a slower animation. But basically you just copy and paste this over as many times as you want to fill up a song. Now this will be a pain to render. The, but the goal of this tutorial was hopefully to show you some things about the shape tool, some animation ideas, and just some problem solving ideas. I don't actually recommend that you create in-depth visualizers in Premiere. I would recommend you check out my couple different reactive spectrums and visualizer tutorials for Adobe After Effects. But if you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you over in the next one.